you're dealing with a problem or two, just remember that God is working miracles. See, God is still working miracles. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And although my faith is being tried today, he reassures me that the Lord will make the way.
thank God because he's given us a victory through it, and we appreciate him. And now, without any further ado, help me welcome our pastor. She brings the word of God. Give her a hearty amen as she comes. Well, it's good to be here. God is so good and so wonderful. I appreciate him. Hope you do. Yes, he's worth praising and worshiping because he's better to us than we've been to ourselves. And I thank him for all that he has done for just being in his house again to worship him in spirit and in truth. I pray that every person in this building came expecting something from God. You know, if you're not looking for something, you usually don't get nothing. But if you're looking for it, expect it, he will not disappoint you. So we're glad that you're here this morning. We hope that you'll have an open heart and mind to receive whatever the Lord would say to you. Not to your auntie or your uncle that's not here, but to you. Sometimes we say, well, ain't so-and-so should have been there this morning for that message. It was for her. No, it was for you. If it was for her, surely uh, some kind of way she would have been here. <laughs> so you listen, tune in. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the sixth chapter of Proverbs. Father, we're so grateful today for your blessings. We thank you because you've never failed us. You've been there for us when we were not there for you. Thank you for being caring and loving. Thank you for your kindness and your goodness to us. Thank you for the privilege it is to worship you and to lift you up in praise. I pray, God, for every person in this building that you would touch their lives, that their eyes would be open, that their understanding would be enlightened. I pray, God, for the anointing upon thy servant, for without you I cannot do it. With you I can do anything, and we'll give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The 16th verse says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and, head, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. I want to preach to you a little while this morning you know, I truly believe if we are going to be effective in our relationship with God, we got to love what he loves and hate what he hates. I think people are struggling because they really don't have anything in common between them and God. You know, what? we don't even really have friendships unless they have, unless they have something there that's, in, that's common with us. Because we want somebody that thinks like we do, feel the way we feel. And so... I think in the world, so to speak, we go places looking for a relationship, but sometimes we look in all the wrong places. And in most cases, people marry people that have something in common. They say opposites attract that don't work with God. I mean, the devil and God don't come together. So you've got to make up in your mind, okay, what is it that God hates that if I hate it, it shows that we got a good relationship? So when I looked at that, I thought, that's the problem why people are constantly struggling, trying to go somewhere, trying to build a relationship with God, and they never get there because they never got to know who he was and say, I love him for who he is. Every person needs to get there. Unless you go there, you will never, ever have a relationship that amounts to anything. It will be one of these up and down things like a yo-yo, going here and going there, but you won't really have a relationship. We go to church, we sing about him, we preach about him, we talk about him, but I want to know the people that's here that says, you know what, I'm here because I love him. I'm here because this is what God wants me to do. Yes. We're trying our best to please him in everything that we can. And if you do, you'll never regret it. He's one person you have to worry about that I knocked myself out for and, and, and he did me bad. No, that just happens in the world. But when it comes to you and God, for sure, if you want that relationship, you're going to have to quit being shifty. Sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes almost to the ground. You ain't going nowhere. 
You got to get in and stay at a certain place that God can be glorified in your life. So he says, one thing I don't like, and another thing is all these other things abomination to me. Like which the, that word abomination means he has an intense hatred for it. So if you want to have a relationship, you can't be with somebody who, who hates something intensely while you love them. That does not work. Somewhere down in there, you got to believe that y'all are on the same page. Somewhere, if this pleases God, it pleases me. Somehow I built a relationship so something good is happening with me in my life because of him. If we, don't ha if we don't get to that place where we can really know for sure that God is really in my heart, people say, well, I, I don't know if I'm a, I think I'm a Christian, but I'm not sure. If you're not sure, you're not a Christian. Because Christians know. They know for sure if there's something going on between them and God. Let me say to you, all of our lives we've had little friends from kindergarten on up. And we play with the ones who kind of play with us. And, and we get along together. But if we run into a little kindergartner that's always wanting to fight and bite, we get away from them. We don't want to be found with them. And to say all of our lives we are building relationships with somebody. The worst person, the, the worst thing you can do is not have one with God. Because when the storm comes and it gets difficult and the skies are dark, you need a relationship between you and God. No getting around it. I was thinking this morning, I guess Juana was setting my bath up, everything in order last night for, before we went to bed. And, and she said, whoa, boy, is Nisa going to have a hard time when you leave? Because she's always there doing all these extra things for me. And so, and the only thing I thought about, you know what to make that better? The closer you get to God, I'm telling you, we're going to feel pain. We're going to feel a sense of loss. But nothing should devastate you and literally pull you apart unless you're not in a good place with God. It's vitally important that we have that. Because you can tell the people that got into those don't. Because the minute trouble come in their lives, they're looking for, uh, I mean, the next pill, the next doctor or something to help me get through this. You need God to help you through the things of this life. No doubt about it. When I got saved, I didn't know who he was. When I said I was going to give my life to the Lord, I really didn't know who he was. But over a period of time, you get to know him. You, you start appreciating who God is and what he can do if you let him. So don't you have to have some time to be a relationship? You don't be a relationship. Uh, he's over there and you over there and y'all don't see each other maybe till Easter or Christmas. You can't build a relationship with God. We always have a lot of people on Easter Sunday. I thought, oh, they don't know him. They think they're supposed to visit him on Easter. None of us would, would thank God for a relationship if somebody only showed up in our life every now and then. Ladies, if your husband only came home twice a year. You don't really have a husband. I don't know what you call that. But if you love me, you want to see me. If you love me, you want to spend time with me. If you really love me, you're willing to make some sacrifices and do what you have to do no matter what. But you got to really love him. People don't love God. They like to talk about it. They like to sing about it. Oh, they can sing, oh, to the highest heaven. But when it comes time to have a relationship with God, it doesn't exist. You want something positive in your life, something that is stable. You know how many women and men over a period of time that I have counseled that uh, most of every time you see a woman crying, she's upset as a man. Almost every time. You say, well, what happened? What's wrong? Well, it's my husband. Well, it's my boyfriend. And I'm thinking... Why don't you make him first? You wouldn't have such a hard time. But we tend to put our confidence and trust in those people that can't be there for us all the time. And then some of them don't want to be there for you all the time. I'm not looking for anything serious. I just want to sleep in your bed. I'm not looking for something serious. How many people give in to that garbage and just go ahead and do whatever you got to do? And then, you know, and then uh, I listened to some women on, on one of the shows last week said, I had a date with him, but he never called me back. 
How far did you go? How far did you go? Were you that cheap? He said, I don't want that. Yeah, there's really no excitement with it. There's nothing going on. If you had waited and built something, hopefully, it could have brought something to the table, but you do things too fast. I heard Steve Harvey say in the book that he wrote, he said, he said, uh, women give in to men too quick. And he's a man. And he said, the thing is, ladies, what you don't understand, if you hold your ground, we'll eventually come. But because you feel like you got to bow to keep them, they leave you anyway. God never leaves nobody ever, ever. We got to have some type of commonality of different features and attributes. We got to have something. I think you should walk with the Lord so much you start favoring him. Your life surely shows, boy, you look just like Jesus. You know, when a, when a woman has a son or uh, children, period, and, 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 and maybe the boy is first to be born, say, boy, he looks so much like his dad. That's because he come of his seed. Okay? So if you cannot have the seed of God and not look like him and be like him and walk like him and act like him, because that's the way we do things. Because when we're connected, we're truly connected. Whatever family you are with this morning, just listen to this. Whatever family you are with that came from, there are resemblance all over the place. It may not be known until you open your mouth, or it may not be known until something happens. And all of a sudden, I said, boy, that's just the way his daddy would do things. I found that in my grandson, Kyle. He died. My, my husband passed away when he was 15 months old. He's now 24. 23, and you just see all kind of little things that shows you he is Charles Banks's grandson. It's that little smirky grin. It's that little something there that reminds you. Then I don't only see that, I see my oldest brother in him. And he'll, he'll look away and something. I say, wow, that's just like my brother. He's never seen him. He's long passed away, but he's never seen him. He never was around it. Isn't that strange? Because something in that person is in you. So every time your person do something, you say, look, at that. he reminds you of daddy. He reminds you of junior. He reminds you of this. How many Christians can just walk out and somebody say, oh, they remind me of Jesus. You know, the way they live, the way they do, they, boy, they look just like him. We don't have many of that. You got to try to figure out who are you? Where did you come from? What about God that you know, know nothing about? Because we don't really apply ourselves with the time that it takes to get to know God. We just got to let things go. So I think it's important before we ever say a word that somebody says, boy, you remind me of somebody. Oh, I know who it is. It's Jesus. Because that's the way I live my life. I'm different. I'm not like everybody else. I go places nobody else go. I pray prayers that probably nobody else prays. I'm, I'm into a situation here, and I'm liking every minute of it. Because every day I wake up, it's all about him. Not about me, not about you, but all about him. What does he want from me today? What can I do? What can I give? That's why David said, what shall I render to God for all the things that he's given me? What can I render? What can I say? Look at your life this morning. Who do you resemble? You look just like the devil. Yes. Oh, you remind me of the devil. Wouldn't that be gross? You remind me of the devil every time I look at you. That's not a good resemblance because everything about him is ugly and messed up. But we want to be able to remind people. When people say, you remind me of someone, give me a good person. Somebody was it told my daughter, I guess it was, she was going to the store and she said, boy, you look like Whoopi Goldberg. My daughter said, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to resemble her. There's nothing beautiful here. And I don't know how they got that out of her because she doesn't look nothing like Whoopi Goldberg. I don't know how she got that. But I'm telling you, 
Sometimes we'll spend our lives trying to be like the stars and want to want to emulate this one or that one. All that stuff passes away. It's not any good. So I want to look like we have so many impersonators in the world today all over the place. They're impersonating somebody, trying to look like them, trying to act like them. But you're not for real. See, walking with God is not an act. It's a relationship. It's not some front I put up. It's a relationship. It really exists. It's not sometime. It's all the time. It's not just on Sunday mornings we go to church, but it's every day of the week. I feel God. If I'm at home by myself, I still feel God. Vitally important. Vitally important. So, you guys, you something. If God hates something, what am I doing loving it? Because if I love it, what he hates, I'm not in unity with him. I'm just going through a situation. But when I get in unity with him, then I recognize right, up, right off. That boy, I'm going to sound like him. He don't use profanity. He don't say a oops. There are no oops with him. You say, I'm a Christian. I curse sometimes. You're not a Christian. Christians don't curse. Christians don't use profanity. What are you talking about? Well, everybody probably slips sometimes. No, everybody don't. You know, I resent the fact that people want to put you in their boat. Come over here. If I do it, you must do it. Don't measure me by your yardstick. I don't want to be there. See, in what ways are we alike? Are we like him? Just look at it. Do you know really when we walk with the Lord long enough that our countenance literally shows that in radiance? That something is different. What is that? Oh, she's got a relationship with God. There's something going on in her life that's good. Most people you see with their head dropped and depressed and won't look up and got nothing to say, they're not in a relationship with God. Because he keeps you happy every day. Some people truly believe that you can't be happy every day. Yes, you can. If you really hook up with God, you can be happy in spite of your circumstances. In spite of it, you still can be happy. So, in many ways, we almost like an identical twin. We're so much like him. You can identify, you can say, that's him. If you see me and if you see him, that's him. We are alike in many ways. And so once I become, once I get to this place, I'm not having a problem to keep from sinning. Man sins because he loves sin. If God hates sin, why are you loving it? The Bible says he that is born of God does not commit sin. You can't sin. If you're born of God. Why? Because the seed of God is within him. So now I have taken on the nature of God. So how then can I be doing all these wrong things when I took on his nature? I am him. I am like him. Because now I think like he thinks. I feel like he feels. I walk the way he walks. Everywhere you see me, I am resembling Jesus. He's not mean. He's not moody. Oh, nothing worse in the church than moody people. I mean, the day they sister so-and-so tomorrow, you don't know who they are. You know what I mean? Every time you look around, they say, well, who are you? Some of these folks got two and three different sides to them. If you keep counting, you might find four or five. It's like, who are you? Don't, the Bible says don't have any dealings with those who are given to change. If they change, don't have no deal with them. They're moody, going back, don't have dealings with them because you don't know what you're dealing with. Because yesterday you could say, hi, Jenny, I love you. I love your dress. You say, thank you. And you can see it tomorrow and say, well, I don't know if that looks, just, looks that good on you. Who you talking to? He's like, where did you come from? Suddenly, I see this a lot in ministry, working with people. It's like you want to ask yourself, who are you? They lie. They lie. They lie. And they lie. I'm just, come on, be a real person. Whoever you are, be for real. Not up and down and back and forth and sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. How do you got to get in with God? Because you will not find Jesus doing this. He doesn't do that. He is who he 
is no matter when you see him. So can we think we have an excuse to be nasty? We have an excuse to look at you funny today. What's wrong with you? It ain't nothing wrong with me. The fact you said it that way, something's wrong with you. But we need to wrap ourselves up with God and have an excellent, uh, excellent relationship so that we're able to bounce no matter which way it goes. We, we're like this. Nothing can throw us over. And so I feel good. Are you feeling good because everything is great? No. Are you feeling good because everything you wanted is now happening? No. Are you feeling good because all your dreams have come true? No. But I'm still happy. I'm still happy. How is that? The only person that can do that for any of us is God. It ain't going to happen otherwise because man is messed up. He is messed up. Sin ruined him. That's why when Ezekiel went down to the potter's house, he said, I saw the vessel and it was marred in the master's hand. And he took it and he began to change it and, and knead it and do all the things you have to do to make it into the vessel that he wanted it to be. Not many people want to surrender to God to say, Lord, do for me what I need, exactly what you want me to be. We don't do that. So you got to take a look at your life and say, I want to look like Jesus. I want to be like him. Or do you just want to remain this half-stepping crazy person that nobody can figure out who you are? I run into them in the church over the years. You think, wow. One thing that really stands out to me about Brother Dennis, you have the same smile. I don't care when you see you. In a few minutes, you're going to grin about something. I think that's good. Not because his life is perfect, but because something on the inside is having control of my life. And I have taken on the seed of God, and it makes a difference in my life. I don't, I've, never, I've never run into Dennis ever where he was funny. I'm talking never. 30 some years is a long time to have never. I mean, because somebody going to get off track at some point. But I'm looking at this man thinking, he's got some issues going on. But they don't affect him. You know why? Because his relationship over here with God, it, it over, it over, um, it, it, it so fulfills everything to over here. That's not important. I can deal with that. Because everything making me happy. See, I just like to uh, listen to, to him pray. Because when you pray, it makes you really think, boy, this is funny. He came to church one Sunday night some years ago. And uh, he didn't tell nobody he was low on gas. Things was tight. But while he was praying out, he said, Lord, he said, I don't know how I'm going to get back home. <laughs> he said, I don't have enough gas in my car. And we said, give Brother Dennis some gas money. So he ain't got to worry about God coming down shaking it. That's what he made us for. But it was amazing how he just told God all about it. I don't know how I'm going to get back. I'm low on gas. I thought it was pretty good to pray out sometimes. Yes, it really is. So somebody here says, he said he ain't got no gas. Because when he's praying, you're going to hear him. And so he just, come on out. He said, Lord, I ain't got no gas. Don't know how I'm going to get back. And we fixed it where he could get back. See? But we know him. If you look at yourself this morning, are you the, are you the same person every day? Hmm? All I hear is hmm. Are you the same person? My husband, God love him. He uh, Charles is a pretty good balanced guy, and uh, but when you put him on a fast, he get kind of irritable. And so, <laughs> so the church was on a fast. I think Nita, I don't think the kids were uh, uh, Nita and, and uh, some of the little kids wasn't on a fast. And so Nita dropped a hot dog on the floor, <laughs> and he said, "Pick it up and eat that." So they come upstairs to the room and said, Mama, Dad is trying to make Nita eat that hot dog that she dropped on the floor. He said, she's not going to throw away no food. That's because he's hungry. And he's totally out loud. So he comes out and says, don't leave that girl alone. I wrote, she won't throw food in the trash. It would be fine if you wasn't hungry. Oh, you got to get that off the floor and have that. 
Because if I was eating, I'd eat it. That's because you're hungry. Sometimes I would have preached on Sunday morning years ago. And I, we, we rode in different cars because he drove to Sunday school and I drive to the 11 o'clock service. And so <laughs> we were going, going home. He just is excited in the church. Thanking God for the word. Everything is just great. So you get in that car and drive home. Come in the house. I said, something wrong? Mm -mm. You can tell by that, mm -mm, it's something wrong. So I told him, I said, Charles, you know what you got to do? You're going to have to quit picking up the devil after church and letting him ride with you and talk to you all the way home. And I said, then when you get to the house, who are you? So I, I gave him three names one time. He was Charles, he was James, and I thought it was another one. And so when he came in from work, hey, how's everybody doing? That's Charles. James come in. James ain't, he don't say much. He just going through the house, whatever. I said, honey, no answer. Honey, no answer. No, so I said, John, did you hear me calling? Rose, you ain't talking about nothing. <laughs> I don't think I started talking yet. I first called you. And the same way with coming in the house. Sometimes you'll come in, you're going to just say hi and be excited. And then another time he come on in, shut the door and say, who is that? Who is that to just come in? I told my kids, I said, that's your crazy daddy. Don't pay no attention. <laughs> Because that's what he do. all depends. So I counseled a, a biracial couple in the church. She was white. He was black. And see, we are culturally different, no matter how you look at it. Say, we're not different. Yes, we are different. The skin doesn't, doesn't make us different. Culture makes us different. So she said, Sister Rose, I don't know what to do with him. He's just, you know, I said, don't worry about that. I said, honey, it don't matter. I said, black women used to that stuff. You know, he ain't got no manners. We used to it. So she said, it's just like he comes in the house and I'll say, Clint, Clint, and he won't even answer. I said, that bothers you? Yeah, because it's just polite. I thought you shouldn't have married no black man. <laughs> Baby, that's the way it goes. And black women know he may not say nothing. It ain't nothing wrong with him. He's just crazy. You just go on with your life, whatever. That's it. It's true. That's what makes the culture sometimes when they, when they end up marrying each other, unless they are, one is willing to give over to the other one, they, they start clashing. I have a, I have a, a sister-in-law who's married to my brother, and she's white and he's black. And... That girl, if you saw her and her talking or, or she's in another room or anywhere, you hear her talking, you would know that's a black woman. You don't see her. You know why? Start talking like a black person. I got that draw. See? And, but either you're going to take over that or you're going to take over her, one or the other. Because we somehow how God made us black people. We understand each other. We speak the same language. You wouldn't think it's strange to me, anything that I do. My husband would never think it was strange. See, you go on. And this is the way I function. You might go to a white person and say, uh, were you going out to, out to look for your furniture today? Well, I'm waiting on John. Oh, is he going with you? Yes, we usually do it together. Ask a black woman, you going to look for furniture? Is Charles going? No, baby, he can't pick no furniture. <laughs> That's what we're going to say. The furniture is my deal. He, he has nothing to do with that. See? Because we know if Charles going to get down there and say, you don't need that, Rose. You don't need that. Rose, keep hitting me in my back. I said, get out of my back. See? Come on, Rose. You, you know, we, don't, we, we can't buy that. How much does it cost? I said, I'm going to get this bed. How much does it cost? I said, I don't care. And one time we went out. Oh, he, 
he really rubbed me. We was in the store. We hadn't been long, got back from Germany. So you ain't, you ain't missed out on a lot of stuff. So I'm going to the store, looking at the furniture and all the different things that happened since we've been overseas. And <clears throat> I go in this store. Back then, brass beds were in. And I said, uh, oh, honey, look at this brass bed. They keep walking. I said, I'm not going to keep walking. <laughs> so I like this bed. So what made me mad, he got behind me in the store, and he put his finger right in the middle of my back and just kept pushing. I said, Charles, get your hand out of my back. And he keep pushing. Get your hand out of my back. Well, he don't like for you to loud talk to me in public. Don't ever do that because that's a bad thing. I said, get your hand out of my back. Okay, he's done with it. He's done with it now because you're not Rose. You'll be acting like that in public. Well, get on and move on. Don't, don't loud talk him anywhere, especially with other people around. That's a no-no. So I was in the house one day, and I was talking to somebody on the phone. And he wasn't, and he was walking around his house shoes with his, and his robe with his little legs showing. And... I was on the phone. I said, Charles. I said, be quiet. I said, I'm talking to these people. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, I could see myself turn into a cat and scratch the back of his legs just like that. I thought I could just scratch your little funny legs like that. You don't want me to shut up. Now, I'm talking to somebody. You be quiet. Oh, no, he's telling me. I'm putting up with this stuff. But I love this man. You better love him. Whoever you marry, you better love him. Because the look you first saw, it won't remain. There's going to be all kinds of little crazy things. You're saying, where did that come from? You never showed me that when we, when we was dating. He didn't mean for you to see that. He meant to carry that into the marriage without you knowing about it. You better like him because all of a sudden when they make you mad, they look ugly. You just look like a crazy idiot. But if you love them, they, they, you got to keep going in spite of. And people don't understand when you build a marriage, you build relationships the same way we build it with God. If you're going to be able to work with God, because we are workers together with God. And since I know that, why don't I get in there and work with him? He's not going to adjust the calendar for you. He's not going to take up some things because you don't like it and adjust it in the word. You got to take it whether you like it or not. See, and, and that's where man's got a problem at. That's where he's got a problem. I don't want nobody controlling my life telling me what to do. If you serve God, he's going to control your life. And if he doesn't, you're not going to make it very far. So he's there to help you. So in spite of, you ain't humbled yourself enough and put yourself in a position where God is able to just take you and mold you and break it and fix it and change this and change that. See, you got to give in. You got to let it happen. If you want to be like him, he's going to have to work it in you. It is God that worketh in us, his will. And to do it according to his, his faith, according to his work. So we got to give in and say, God, here I am, fix me. And what you do, you lay down, you let it all go, and you realize without a doubt, he's taking care of it. Or else you're going to kick and fight and holler and say, I'm not that bad, and you need to do this to Jenny, and this should happen over here and over there. Uh-uh. God's talking about you. Me and you coming together. Now, since I know we don't have things in common yet, I'm going to begin to make you over. And when I make you over, I'm going to put my will in you. And then I'm going to work it in so that you can do what I say. See, everybody wants to do their own thing. That's man's issue. I, I'm grown. I'm grown. I, my son-in-law sits up here. We ask him a question sometimes. Hey, Amos, why would you do that? Grown. Don't say nothing, grown. So, in other words, I'm grown. That's why I did it. You know what, grown? I don't care what question you come up with. If you got a question or something about it, you forget grown. And that's why every person in this building gets to a point when we become of age, I'm grown. I don't have to listen to you. And for the most part, they don't want to. But you've got to listen to God. 
Otherwise, you'll never have a relationship. So what am I going to do? I'm going to give up. I'm going to give in. I'm going to say, yes, Lord. Whatever you want, that's what I want. I want to do what you want me to do. If you do that, honey, this is an easy walk. But if you try to fight him, you're not going to be able to make it. I can tell you right now, you can't make it if you try to fight him. But if you give in to him. Apostle Paul tried to fight him. He said, I find it hard to kick against the pricks. I can't, I can't win. You can't win. Do you want a relationship? You're going to have to give some. You're going to have to sacrifice some things. You're going to have to be willing to do something with him. Maybe the, uh, in, in many other ways, maybe you didn't want to. You got to show an interest. We don't have any interest in God. We don't want to hear the word preach. We don't want nothing. We just said, I just want it to be the way it is. No, you got to give up something. You cannot do it without it. it must, you got to be prepared to sacrifice. It's prepared to meet a person halfway. In God's situation, there's no meeting halfway. You come all the way, whatever he says. It's a good life. But it ain't going to be good if you got your own will and your own way to do it your way. It ain't going to be good. See? So if you love what God loves, Simply means you take pleasure in what he takes pleasure in. It means you have this strong affection for God. It's also you have that somehow this kinship, personal ties united with him. I'm telling you, when you get to the place that you'll just take him on, put on his nature, and said, Lord, I'm willing to do it your way. Because we all done tried it that way. It doesn't work. We always make a mess of things. Man has made the bigger mess of his life than anybody else. Oftentimes when he makes a mess, he tries to blame somebody else for it. But at the end of the day, he knows he messed up. God said, I want to come on and be the captain of your ship. I want to drive it. I want to take you around. I will not run into cars. I won't mess up nothing. Just let me take you. People sitting in this room right this morning have messed up their own lives. And they sit here wondering why my life had to go this way. Why am I going through all this? Why is it this way and that way? You did it. Let God take over. Let him have it. Say, God, here I am. Whatever you want to do, I surrender. If I surrender and give it to him, I can build that relationship. And what he hates, I will hate. What he loves, I will love. See? Ken, I was told about you a couple of weeks ago where they said, I said, kid chews gum all the time. She said, your kid said he has to chew that gum because the word beat him so bad he had to chew on gum. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he chewed. I thought, now at some point I'm going to figure I already got it cleaned up, now the gum can go. <laughs> yeah, because he said, he, I mean, all the time. Because whatever Sister Rose is going to say, she's going to step on my feet, break my legs, kick my ankle, everything. So I, I, I just chew this gum, help me, help me to deal with it. <laughs> A lot of people in here, when you hear the truth, you got some little thing that you do to try to put up with this, try to get through it. You want me to have a relationship with God? Yes. You want one? Well, what all is involved? Just say yes. Just say yes, Lord. Whatever it is, I'll do it. When you get to that place, you're in a good place. You don't ask no questions. You don't try to figure it out. You just say, here, here it is. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll be what you want me to be. Oh, you say, well, that's simple. Not for most people. 99% of people, that's not simple. Because man doesn't surrender his will to people. And most of all, not to God. And you know why we ain't changing? Because we still want to do it our way. God said, don't do that. Come back over here. Let that look. It's every day look like I can't get nothing right. You right. But when you let go and let God and start loving him, your affection is based on admiration. I admire him. It is a warm attachment. Uh, it is a feeling of unselfish loyalty. This is all about God. If you want a relationship this morning, I'm telling you how you get it. Because most people don't have it. They talk about it. They sing about him, but they don't know him. When you know him, it's to please him. When you know him, it's to walk in the path. 
When you know him, you don't have to look to the, to the left nor the right. Just keep going. When you know him, there's no room for self-pride. There's no room for all this uh, uh, intellectual things because God don't need that. I just want you to humble yourself. I just want you to say, yes, Lord, whatever that is. I learned that through going through the fire. You're going to either do it. Every person just about, I don't care who they are, they're going through the fire before they surrender. He has to put you in the furnace of affliction and cause you to go through some pain before you'll say, Lord, I'll do it your way. A lot of things you're doing right now that's, that's got problems in your life come from a simple fact you've done something you shouldn't have done. And he wants to help you to get through it. So what do you love? I love everything he loves. We have that in common. See? Thou shalt have, thou shalt not have in that house divers measures, uh, great and a small, but thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. For all that do such things and all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Remember that Amalek did it unto thee, by the way, when you will come forth out of Egypt. He said, look at this. God said, I don't want no false way. Don't try to put something on the scale and balance it out that ain't right. I need you to be perfect. I need you to do what I say. I need you to quit putting up the front that you got it. That's false. He said, I hate every false way. Check yourself. How false are you? How, how messed up are you? I was counseling with somebody yesterday. I said, you're, you're, you're about the most habitual liar I've ever seen in my life. You have told one lie after another lie. Now, he said, I hate liars. Well, you're not going to have a relationship with God lying. Because he said, I hate lying. And you keep doing it and doing it without any, reg any regard that this is my partner. I'm in a relationship. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You know what? All of us know, I mean, before we lie, we're getting ready to lie. There ain't a person that don't know that. I know that. See? He said, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, of a charmer, or a charmer, or a, cons a counselor with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a, a, a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these ab ab abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before you. He said, if I hate something, it disgusts me. That's what that word abomination means, disgust. I'm disgusted with you. So I'm not going to deal with you because you ain't ready to say yes. Are you ready to say yes? You ready to say, Lord, what you want to do, I'll do. What you love, I love. What you hate, I hate. When you get that way, there is no more struggle. The struggle is that you and God are at odds with each other because he's over here and you over there. Think about it. Where are you? How, if you had to judge your relationship this morning with God on, on, on a scale of 1 to 10, where would you be? Where would it be? Amos. 1 to 10. I think it's 8. All right. That's a pretty good score. Yes. Five. Yes. Where's your Where's your relationship at? On a scale of one to ten, says, "What's this road beyond?" I ain't on the scale. <laughs> I can't give you a number because I don't fit nowhere. <laughs> That's bad. How is your relationship with your husband or your wife on a scale of one to ten? Do, do, do y'all even like each other? <laughs> Boy, I counsel some people, I have to stop and say, do, do y'all like each other? Well, I know you don't love each other. That's what she said, Sister Rosa, so and so and so. Do you like her? Well, why are we so angry? Why are we so upset? He knows what I want to do. Or the husband's telling me, she don't do anything I want. I said, what are you doing that she wants? And she said, yeah, tell it, tell it. What do you do? <laughs> but if you want to rate yourself and be honest because most of the time we don't rate ourselves good. 
We always rate ourselves usually higher than what we are. But you gotta say, I gotta move. I gotta go we get a relationship. <laughs> I tell you, the time is coming in your life, you're gonna wish you had. And it's up to you to make the difference. It's up to you to kick it in. See, God's already in. He's waiting for you to come in. He's already got a connection. He wants you to hook into it. What are you going to do? Well, you know, I've been saying I'm going to change. I've been saying I'm going to do things different. Stop lying. Are you? I told this person yesterday when I was talking to him, I said, I don't believe nothing you say. Tell one lie, you tell two. Tell two, you tell three. You just keep on lying. Because every lie you tell, you use another lie to try to fix that. When it's not right. God said, a liar will not tarry in my sight. Think about that. I, you won't tarry in my sight. Not if you're a liar. He hates a liar. Well, how did I get in the, in the place where God is hating me? He hates a liar. Well, I can't build a relationship if I don't come out of that. What are you doing this morning of the six things that God hates and seven are abomination to him? What are you doing? So you know what? I didn't even know that. He hates people who divide people and go plant seeds in this person against this person. That's sowing discord among brethren. He said, I hate that. That you would call somebody to hate somebody else or dislike them for something you told them that you should have kept your mouth shut on. Think about it. While this message is in motion, think about where am I at? Do I even have a relationship? Because if you're still sinning, you don't have one. Because he hates sin. That's, that's why I say if you're born of me, if you let me put my seed in you, he says you won't commit sin. So if you're still sinning, you're not in a relationship. Because he takes all that away. We love to have this reason. Not like I do bad things all the time, Sister Rose. Every now and then. God is not every now and then. He is every day the same. He changed not. Think about it. I am going to walk it by his word. According to what righteousness is. According to what holiness is. According to what right and wrong is. I am going to distinguish between the two and make the right decision. How important it is for you to do that. We really don't want to get into it that way because I want to be able to say I'm not quite there yet. You know how many people was going to get right 20 years ago? They still sit in this church. They still got the same problem. Why is that? Because I really don't have a relationship. I come to church. I sing. But I don't really know him. I'm singing to a stranger. I'm talking about a stranger. I don't know him. But when you know what he, who he is and what he likes and what's abomination to him, I'm not going to do it if I know that's that way. I will show you a marriage that's doomed to fail if everything your mate uh, likes, you hate. And if everything, if it goes the other way, same truth. Same truth. We don't, I don't like nothing about him, but what did you marry him for? You should like something. And yet every day I look at him, I can't stand the sight of him. You're not in love. That's not a relationship. You're nuts. And pretty soon, where are you at? At the divorce court. Well, you know, we, we just didn't click. Well, did you find that out before you got married? Because you should have clicked before and clicked after. But with the Lord, it's a solid relationship. If you're willing to do your part, he will do his. Think about it this morning. Where do, where, do, where do I stand? Is my relationship kind of casual, an on and off relationship with God? Is it? Or is it always the same no matter what? The same. I loved you yesterday. I love you today. I loved you when it was dark. I loved you when there were light. I loved you no matter what happens in my life. And, and be like Job, he never charged God foolishly no matter what he went through. We're quick to say, I don't know why God let this happen. God, you're doing this stuff. Take a moment. Take time to say I love you. Take time to spend, you got to spend time in prayer to get to know him. You got to study his word to get to know him. If you don't, 
you'll never have a relationship. We never have a relationship with strangers. You go out to church today and you go uh, to King Super or you go to the gas station or wherever. You don't have no relationship with them people. You may say, hi, how are you? Isn't it a beautiful day? That's not a relationship. That's small talk. And I think that's kind of what we want to bring to the Lord, small talk. But, Lord, I'm not, I'm not really getting serious about you. I'm not, I'm not into being serious now. Uh, I just, you know, talk to you sometime when trouble comes. If I have a hard time, I'll come, I'll come talk to you. I don't want to be used like that. The foolish shall not stand in his sight. Thou hatest, talking about God, all workers of iniquity. Ye that love the Lord will hate evil. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. If you phony, hate it. I hate vain thoughts. God's narrowing it on down to you. I don't like people who just have vain thoughts. There's plenty of that in the world. But thy law I love. David said, I love your law. People that don't love the word are never going to make it. I hate and abhor lying. The law do I love. I abhor it. Don't like it. I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery. I hate the evil, but I love the good. So ask yourself, are you doing good or are you doing bad? And say, well, I just, I've tried to do good, and I, I do my best I can, but, you know, everybody's going to mess up. We're all human. You better can that one. He came for your humanity because he knew by yourself you couldn't do it. So, do you really want a relationship? Well, it all depends on all that he's asking of me before I make that commitment. But we don't want a relationship with, with certain people because they want too much from us. You want, you want that too? No. You can't build off of that. Listen to what he's saying. Let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. I love no false oath for all these are things that I hate. Don't make up a lie. I hate it. Do, what, do what's honest and show that you got some integrity. Take a look. They that are of a fraud heart are abomination to the Lord, David said. Fraud heart means a disobedient heart, consistently disobedient. Just keep doing, I hate you. I don't want to be on God's hate list, do you? I don't think so. I surely want to be wherever he is, that he loves me, and I'm doing the right thing, and I love him. It's more to shaking than shaking the preacher's hand. It's more than just singing a beautiful song. All that's good in his place, but it won't give you a relationship. So this morning, while you sit there, think about what the message is. Where's my relationship with God? And do I really hate everything he hates? Do I really love everything he loves? Answer yourself honestly. No, there's some things I probably don't want to do like that. I love those who walk in humility, not the people that walk in pride. Because I'll bring you down. He hates pride. A proud look. Do you have that when you walk around? Head up in the air, you think you're all that? God said, I hate you. I hate it. Hate's a strong word. But that's saying, God says, I don't like that. What are you going to do about it? You got to be willing to take it all up, give it all to him, and say, here it is, God. I let it all go. For I want to do it the way you want me to do. I want to be a nice person. We got too many nasty people. Now, you look over this room, you wouldn't think there's a nasty person in here. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Under all that little facade. Yes. And somebody, and somebody said, well, how are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Oh, yeah. Step on their toe accidentally. <laughs> Can you be careful? Watch it. You know, I'm sort of thinking you deliberately step on my feet every time I come to church on Sunday. Why is my foot? You don't know what's coming out of these people. These people are crazy. They don't do that with me. I'm closing on this note. Every, after every service, our members 
we have what we call a cleaning team. So every time after service, they have to go to, they find a place they're going to clean, whether you're uh, taking care of the pews or whether you're up here in the pulpit or whether you're back there, whatever. Everybody's doing something to keep it clean. I'm never here. I happened to sit over one night, and this person was, I guess, assigned to vacuum up here. They vacuum and vacuum and vacuum. I said, baby, you can move on. <laughs> I said, I think it's done. Oh, okay. And Sister Rose is looking. You ain't going to get no more dirt, and you got it. <laughs> and them same people. Who's supposed to do that? Is there a reason why I have to do this all the time? Why can't the come and help me? She's supposed to do this half. I'm supposed to do that half. And then when I get through, I got to go over to her. They ain't nice. They're not nice. Jesus was nice. Divine nature is sweet. It's easy to deal with. Where are you? If you're still acting a fool, you need to get saved. You still can get rubbed with the least little thing. This morning, I leave the message with you to say, what are you going to do to change that? Because you'll never have a relationship with God until you do. So what are you going to do? You going to change it? See, you wouldn't have liked me before I got saved. I was nasty, mean, hard to get along with, just messed up. And 50 years ago, he came and changed my life, made me a nice person. A person that loves people. A person that's not trying to hurt anybody. Not full of wrath and anger and all the things that happen to you in life you just carried around. He changed all that. He can do it for you this morning. You sit in there and say, Sister Rose, yeah, I'm a mean person. Or do you say, well, I'm not that mean. Mean is mean. Let's not, let's not minimize, don't minimize it. Well, our musicians and singers are coming forward to play if you're here this morning and you say, you know what? I need to change. Before come for, uh, and before coming here, I thought I had a relationship, but I really don't. So many things I don't do right. I don't really talk to the Lord every day. I don't really get into his word and read it and study it. You have to die to who you are and become a new person the way God wants you to be. A real Christian, you're not going to rub them wrong. You're not going to have a difficult time. I know when the Christians in the church, when I got a bulldog, and when you get up on one of them bulldogs, <laughs> but I learned a long time ago, by the time I get through talking to you, you're going to do something with the bulldog. Because I'm not going to change it. This is who you are. Let's do something about it. You can do it. But if you lie to yourself and tell yourself, I think I'm okay. I think I'm a pretty nice person. Pretty nice? You want pretty nice in the heaven? You got to be perfect if you go there. That's what he said. Be ye perfect as I am perfect. That's what he says. God love you. I appreciate you this morning for being here and hearing this message. Hold it close to your heart and think about it today. And when you leave this building, the first person that walks up on you or the person who cross over you in, in, in going down the street, are you doing, <laughs> come on, that's not going to solve nothing. You can blow your horn and get mad all you want to the person still drive, and you can't get past them. If the other lane's full, full, you can't get past them. People are hard to get along with. Don't have to be, yes, don't have to be. You have to pat me on my leg. I won't know you're here. Okay. My grandbaby come up here and change me out of one shoe into another one. And she just be waiting on the floor like a little. <laughs> Hit me on the leg, honey. I don't know you're there. I said, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what I want you to do, I want you to stand to your feet. And I want you to say, Sister Rose, I'm that person. You don't have to tell me out loud, but you know in your heart who you are. You want to change? You can change. God bless you. Quit going through processes for nothing. Get some results. You can have it if you want to have it. So if you want prayer this morning, we're going to ask you to come forward. Let us pray for you. 
that God would change your life. If he did it for Sister Rose, he can do it for you. He has no respect of persons. God bless you.